Which approach is best in line and wash? To paint first or to draw first? I discuss this in this step-by-step -step street scene tutorial. Let's get started. For a full list of all the materials I'm using, colours, alternative colours, a link for the photograph and a sketch outline can be found in the description below. I divided my piece of paper up into two equal sizes and I put some washi tape around the border and I'm using cold press 300 grams paper and I'm mixing up a little bit of pink, yellow ochre and blue. So it's basically the three primary colours to make a very pale neutral colour just to sort of block out the basic shapes, the shape of the sky and just sort of gauging where the horizon line is. And you can always spot where the horizon line is, is where most of the heads are. So they could be on the horizon, a little bit above and a little bit below. It all depends on the height of the person who took the photograph. And I go into more detail about this in my Patreon linear perspective tutorial. Details for that can be found in the description below. So as you can see here, I'm just sort of using some of the diagonal lines here to lead the eye to the sort of almost a vanishing point on the horizon here using two point linear perspective marking in the buildings as well with this very pale color the photograph that I've used I've actually cropped it so I'm just focusing in on the center of the photograph it's quite a busy photograph so I'm just marking in here little points and anything that goes wrong for instance that little mark there I've just wet it and I'm lifting off with a paper towel so you can do that with very pale colours. So I'm just marking in some of the windows here, keeping everything really loose. So one of the pros I find without any sort of pencil or pen drawing at the beginning is that you can really loosen up. And I'm just using a large flat brush here with a very dilute ultramarine and just sort of painting in some washes on the pavement there, wet on dry, adding a little bit of yellow ochre and just sort of painting that wet on dry on the buildings there as well. It may smudge some of the marks that I made, but that's absolutely fine. All these washes are very pale and I'm working light to dark. So I'm mixing up here some quinacridone rust, you can use burnt sienna and a little bit of ultramarine, very pale, painting here just in the left hand corner, pretty much still sort of wet on dry in areas. And I'm just sort of blocking in the shapes, working with these light washes here in the foreground as well. So I'm mixing up here a little bit of lemon yellow with some Windsor red to make an orange and I'm just painting that wet into wet there where I can see some orangey lights coming from that building. A little bit here on the right hand side as well where I can see the lights. So straight away again without any drawing you don't have any boundaries. So if you like to paint loose this could be a really good way for you to start out just by sort of making marks with your brush with a very pale wash and then just building up using a large brush painting large shapes. So I'm going to allow the painting to dry. So I'm actually going to concentrate on spattering here in this area where all the heads are going to be just above or below or on the horizon and it just sort of gives me all these sort of random sort of places to put the head. Now you don't have to paint on all these areas and some of the spatters will go too high or too low. So use a clean damp brush and just soften them away as what I'm doing here. I'm just going to use some of them. It's just again a really nice loose way of sort of starting and it takes away all that fear hopefully it just throws you in the deep end and you just have no choice you have to start painting so I've mixed up some ultramarine there with a pinch of burnt sienna and I'm painting sort of using the whole of my sort of brush hairs there kind of almost an arched shape and I've added a little bit of red in there and this is going to be sort of for the bodies of the people so I'm just sort of painting that just below the heads. And just to say, when you're painting a head on a person, especially a small person in a street scene like this, you want to exaggerate the size of the head. So you want to make it a lot smaller than you think it will be. You can always make it bigger, but if you make it too big, it's very tricky to make it smaller. So that's why I've used that spattering technique to make all these little dots for the heads. 
So I'm just sort of painting in some of the clothing here using a little bit of turquoise and I mixed a Payne's Grey in with the turquoise as well just to darken up some of those colours painting damp into damp there to paint some darks as well. So I'm not sort of getting bogged down with the detail here. I've actually got bodies without heads in some places and bodies without legs. I'm just sort of blocking in and just sort of responding to the shapes in this photograph. Rather than think of them as people, just think of the umbrellas and the people as just shapes. Light shapes, dark shapes, mid-tone shapes, red shapes, grey shapes. And it's a really good idea as well if you practice this beforehand. So it hopefully the practice will sort of make you a little bit more brave. When you're painting the legs, try to keep them as almost two sort of thin sort of rectangles with points at the end. I don't paint necks, facial features, hands or feet. So you don't have to worry about any of that. You're giving the impression of people. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two people painting tutorials in the description below if you want to learn more about painting people especially sort of little people in a landscape or a sort of street scene like this so I'm mixing up some quinacridone rust and ultramarine and a couple of other colors there and just sort of painting sort of little dots here and there for the heads so I've sort of gone over those little splattered doc dots that I did earlier and I'm just sort of painting some colourful sort of jackets and clothing in an arched shape. And what I try to do is have the bodies the same length as the legs and also have one leg longer than the other so that the people look like they're walking. So I'm just making some marks here on the road in the foreground. It looks like some tram lines there and they start quite wide at the bottom of the painting and then they appear to converge as they go off into the distance and that's the perspective lines and that's what creates depth in the painting giving the illusion of a 3d space on a 2d surface i'm just using ultramarine here and there with a bit of the quinacridone rust again you can use the burnt sienna and it makes some beautiful sort of blue grays or warm grays and i'm just sort of painting and marking out some of the windows there on the left and in the distance wet on dry and just sort of marking out people as well painting sort of more neutral colors here and there especially for those people in the distance and i'm just using a dilute ultramarine with the quinacridone rust there with that gray to paint some reflections of the people on the wet pavement and i'm just mixing up again some of the quinacridone rust and ultramarine and just painting in some of the windows wet on dry with my size 10 round brush and I'm just looking at the shapes of the windows and the sort of colors using a little bit of turquoise I'm now adding a little bit of sort of diluted alizarin crimson here and there for the sort of warm colors I've mixed up some turquoise with some Payne's grey to paint some of the dark clothing here and there sometimes just one mark will do um, here and there you don't have to go into great detail with this sort of style of painting I'm just adding a few darks here and there as well so as you can see it's a really loose style fun to paint I've just mixed up a little bit of pink with some yellow ochre there just painting in some of the faces wet on dry and what I would say is one mark, one sort of blob with the brush is enough. Don't labour your paints. Keep everything really fresh. Just paint shapes, sort of vertical marks, horizontal marks, squares, triangles, etc. So just painting a little bit more reflection with a very sort of light grey. And again, you can just see me painting one mark and just marking in the tram lines there using some Payne's Grey with a little bit of the turquoise. You could use Prussian Blue with Payne's Grey as an alternative or carry on with Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. So just adding a few more dark accents here and there. Just add a little bit more of the Quinacridone Rust and these are almost abstracted marks. I love painting buildings in this way. I'm sort of responding to the sort of marks and the windows and the 
sort of architecture of the buildings and just sort of painting here and there. When you're painting the marks in the distance, you want them smaller and paler as well in tonal value. So they look like they're going further away. And that's what I'm doing here with these distant buildings, um, just on the edge of the buildings as well, pulling them away from the sky. It's like handwriting with the brush. It's fun to do. And again, less is more. Don't doubt yourself. Go with your instincts and just practice, you know, using the watercolour in this way. I'm just painting some of the dark sort of puddles here, wet on dry, using some Payne's Grey. Again, less is more. Don't overdo this. So I'm going to allow my painting to dry. I'm using a black fine liner pen, which is waterproof. You could use a ballpoint pen or even use a small brush and use black watercolour paint or even Indian ink or dip your a twig into Indian ink or black watercolour paint. There's lots of ways to sort of use line and wash. Here I'm actually using the pen. I like using the pen and I'm just sort of sketching in here responding again to the photograph but also using my imagination and scribbling in the marks try to have the marks open don't have them completely closed have have them open ended so you don't sort of go all the way around without any gaps keep it super loose sometimes if you go wrong a little bit you can disguise your mistakes but if you've got all your lines closed in and you go wrong it's harder to disguise so keep it super loose and then just enjoy it it's so lovely to sort of sketch and draw in this way and what I would say is make sure your paint has absolutely dried because I have found in the past if there's any dampness on the paint it stops my pen from working for some reason so give that painting a chance to dry and then sketch away making marks and again in the distance here less is more have busier sort of stronger marks in the foreground and softer marks smaller marks in the distance and you can scribble and sort of sort of cross hatch and make dots and etc go with your instincts again have fun with it I always feel it's uh, drawing like this using a pen is like handwriting everyone's marks will be slightly different and you don't have to draw completely around everyone I find using the pen in this way kind of describing people you know and this sort of style of sketching is great if you would like to sort of sketch outdoors um, on the on a scene sort of thing and just want to quickly make some sort of little bit detailed sketches in your sketchbook it's great to do so have fun with it the more you do the more you practice the better you will become you'll just feel more confident and hopefully you'll start to find your style what you like to do how you like to draw so I always like to go back in with a little bit more watercolour just to paint in some shadows. Always have the shadows on the same side as everyone. So I'm painting it a little bit on the left hand side. So the light's coming from the right. So I'm just using some Payne's Grey and my size six round brush and just sort of painting them in again, sort of painting once here and there just to bring the painting to life using a little bit of yellow and pink here and just adding a bit of colour through the people, through the sort of gaps there as well, just to make my painting look more interesting. So you can see starting off with that very sort of loose style, just with the watercolour painting in shapes, not labouring the drawing, just doing your own thing, letting it dry and then using the pen to pull it all together, giving your line and wash painting structure. It brings all those shapes together. It makes sense of them. So I'm just sort of using my flat one inch brush here with a dilute turquoise and Payne's grey and just sort of painting some of the shadows on the wet pavement and also on the buildings here and there and on some of the reflections of the people as well. Lovely broad strokes here and there wet on dry. I thought it'd be quite nice to paint in a sky so I'm just using some of that Payne's Grey just darker at the top wet in wet there just using my flat one inch brush and I'm going to allow my painting to dry. So here is the finished painting and I think I'll leave it there for now. I'm really pleased with it. So I'm going to start on my next line and wash. So as you can see I've actually sketched out the scene with an HB pencil. 
So it's quite loose. And I've done that, especially for those of you that are worried about using a pen, because this is a waterproof pen, you can't actually remove the marks. So you may find some pencil guidelines will give you the confidence to use the pen. So I like to sort of do the pen in kind of two stages. The first stage, I will sketch very loosely to get the scene in. So I'll just use sort of very basic sort of lines, not too much detail, not very much shading. And if you notice, they're very open lines, very sketchy. And as I said earlier in this tutorial, keep your lines very open. You don't want them all closed and joined up because it allows for corrections. It makes correcting your line and wash a little bit easier. Sometimes if the, if the lines are all joined up, it's hard to do a little bit of sort of cross hatching or shading over the top because you've got this sort of joined up sort of pen marks. So don't have them joined up. Keep it really loose and enjoy it. I'd like to let you into a secret and I hope it builds your confidence. In my younger days, I've always loved painting. I, I felt so natural with a paintbrush in my hand, whether it had oil paint, acrylic paint, or watercolours, gouache, um, pastels, etc. It just felt natural to use colours and shapes. When I had a pencil in my hand, I was always doubting myself and I was always rubbing things out, etc. And I'd make a hole in my paper. And it was only one day when I first sort of discovered a mapping pen where you dip the sort of nib into some black Indian ink. I just found my drawing improved overnight and the reason the discovery must have been is because when you have a pen in your hand that you can't rub out, it makes you look at what you're drawing or what you're looking at. So when you have a pencil, you do a lot less looking. I did and I've watched students over the years and they do and they have their head down and they're looking just at their drawing and they're rubbing out. They're not actually looking at the photograph or the still life, etc. So try that out. It really does work. Just use a pen to draw the scene and don't have a rubber or an eraser anywhere in sight. Even if you are using a pencil, your drawing will improve because you will be looking more. It's as simple as that. We are better than we think we are. So as you can see here, I'm just continuing on sort of sketching in these marks, which I love to do. And this is on cold press paper. You'll find using a pen on rough paper can be a little bit scratchy. And I find sometimes hot press paper is lovely for line and wash. It's lovely and smooth. But as you can see here, I'm just sort of taking my time, sketching this scene in and just seeing what happens. It doesn't have to be exactly like the photograph. It's your interpretation. Enjoy your making your marks. That's the important thing. How your painting or drawing looks at the end doesn't have to look like mine or anyone else's. It's what you have to say. So enjoy that and let yourself go. Treat it as a practice. It's all the pra practice is everything, not the end result. Just enjoy the process of practicing the art of line and wash or watercolor painting, etc. So once you finish your first stage of drawing with your pen, I rub out all of the pencil lines and I start painting on a pale watercolor wash. Make sure that wash is very dilute. The pen is the star of the show. Keep it as the star of the show. So I've just mixed up some of that pink and yellow just to paint in some faces wet on dry with my size eight brush. I'm painting in a very, very pale sky, wet on dry, just with a little bit of dilute Payne's Grey and pink. I'm just sort of wetting the buildings here and then painting on a little bit of very dilute pink and yellow ochre, the same colours that I painted the faces with. I'm using Payne's Grey mixed with that yellow ochre and pink, very dilute, and also a little bit of that quinacridone rust and Payne's Grey, very dilute. Painting wet on dry with my size 8 brush, just tinting the buildings, letting the pen come through. I don't want to disguise the pen. This is line and wash. So I'm painting the wash, a dilute wash, so I can see the line. So using a little bit of ultramarine here with a touch of pink, with a tiny touch of yellow ochre to paint those distant buildings. 
and then just painting a little bit of that tint there that sort of very grayed violet here and there wet on dry and a little bit of wet into wet on the left there just using a touch of Payne's gray now to paint the umbrella here in the center wet on dry and then adding a little bit more Payne's gray wet into wet touch of ultramarine and Payne's gray here painting some blue jeans to the man on the left and mixing up some quinacridone rust and Payne's grey just to paint now the clothing of the people in the foreground especially there'll be stronger tonal values so trying to mix up those neutral dark colors so don't make the paint too thick and creamy you want it lovely and transparent but you want the shade to be darker so that's why I'm using Payne's Grey, Quinacridone Rust, Ultramarine, touch of pink here and there to make the darks look more interesting don't just use Payne's Grey or black or something like that on its own really make those dark colors look interesting and I'm just using a little bit of the quinacridone rust with the Payne's Grey just to paint some hair on the people here and there and I'm just sort of painting some dilute sort of colors using the yellow ochre you can use raw sienna just to paint some of those sort of lovely neutral colors I've got a touch of cerulean and some of the Payne's Grey and just sort of painting wet on dry take your time when you're painting these shapes remember I said earlier in this tutorial just paint once keep it really fresh and what's lovely here a lot of the people have got white tops and t-shirts and things on so you can just leave that white as well the color of the paper using a touch of the Windsor red here and I'm going to paint the umbrella here in the foreground red rather than the transparent umbrella remember this is your painting you can do what you want with it really make you know you can design it and that's what I'm doing so red's quite a nice color especially in the foreground it pulls it forward so just sort of painting some of the other umbrellas a little bit more neutral in the distance and a few more people as well sometimes a good little tip if you're kind of getting a little bit tired of painting the people swap to the buildings start painting some of the shading and marks on the buildings which is what I'm doing here with the Payne's Grey and a little bit of the quinacridone rust but you can use ultramarine with quinacridone rust or swap that rust for burnt sienna or burnt umber burnt umber and ultramarine make beautiful greys so you can really sort of have fun mixing those lovely neutrals there for the building I'm just painting some of the reflections now of the people just with a very dilute Payne's grey and as you can see literally just once and it's a, almost like a dry brush it's quite beautiful mixing up a touch of red there I can see lots of red lights in the buildings there so I'm just sort of painting them wet on dry with my size 8 brush just here and there picking them out there's a little journey of red lights here and there and then I'm diluting and softening with a clean damp brush I can see sort of some cerulean colored flags there so I'm just painting those in on the left hand side and a little bit on the right as well so I think it's a good time now to allow my painting to dry. So I'm going back in with my pen for the second stage of pen on the dry surface. Make sure your painting is absolutely dry because it could ruin your pen. And I'm just sort of really enhancing some of the marks I made previously. And I'm using some cross hatching for some shading. And as you can see here, and that's diagonal marks going back and forth here and there. You can also just scribble and use your own sort of mark making. And just sort of, just again, as I was saying earlier in this tutorial, just go with your instincts, test things out, experiment. And what I would suggest is maybe use your sketchbooks for this or the back of an old painting. So it takes the pressure off. It's really amazing what we can do when we're not under pressure. So as you can see here, I'm just pulling out the details, sketching some of the shadow colors there with the cross hatching, working my way around, drawing in a little bit more detail than I had previously because I didn't have as much detail, bringing some things to life. What I would say is don't fill in too much with the black ink. It becomes very dominant and it becomes more about the drawing and less about the wash. And the other thing is you kind of lose the light of the paper. So it's great if you're just doing a line drawing using the pen. 
But once you start introducing the wash, you want that beautiful transparency. So what I would say is just keep those marks with the pen open and scratchy, which is what I'm doing here. I'm kind of really letting go here um, using my own sort of style. You don't have to do my style, but you just sort of practice just using the pen, just letting yourself go and just seeing what happens. So as you can see, I'm just adding in darks and details on the clothing, a little bit of stronger tonal values on the reflections, just darkening up the clothing here, as you can see, pretty much using Payne's Gray with a pinch of the Quinacridone Rust. I'm doing the same on the windows here, but remember less is more, don't labor your painting. I'm just sort of freshening up those darks and details. There's no right or wrong here. You don't have to fill in all of the windows with marks. Again, just go by your instincts. I'm just adding a few darks to those tram lines in the foreground and adding some lemon yellow mixed with some red here for some and um, to make the lines and the marks there a little bit more orangey in that foreground to really lead your eye through. I thought it'd be quite nice just to add a few more sort of warmer sort of colours here and there on the buildings. Just adding some red to the chap's red check shirt to the left, a little bit more red in the distance there and just softening with a clean damp brush to finish off. I've removed the washi tape and here are the two finished paintings. And they are slightly different. Obviously one I painted freehand and the other I started off with the pencil drawing and then the line drawing. Don't forget to sign your work as well. So I really hope you enjoy these two approaches to line and wash. And maybe you want to try out both and see which one suits your style. Or maybe you already know by just watching this tutorial. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. And if you'd like to support the content that I create here on YouTube, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? You will get access to weekly exclusive tutorials and downloadable outline sketches, and you can cancel any time. Details about the membership can be found in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Happy line and wash painting. Bye for now.